was this. Oh shit. Oh! Yep. Yeah. Hi, did you know that the more a scene is mundane, boring or commonplace like this one, the less you will pay attention to small details and notice you have been tricked? But if we were to take a scene that has something in it not so ordinary, the audience is on the opposite very likely to be on the lookout for the slightest mistake. Today we are going to go through 101 tips that I do hope will help you get through your next green screen session. I am aware that some of them require professional equipment that can be a bit expensive, but others are more generic and apply to every budget. So enough talking, let's dive straight into it and start with the first tip. Estimate the size of your green screen precisely depending on the complexity of the scene you want to shoot and the depth of the room, as well as the right focal length. I've put a link in the description to an online guide which helped me a few times in the past. If you're not shooting in a dedicated studio, pick a shooting location that will offer enough space because when you start accumulating lighting equipment and props, getting through can quickly become a nightmare. Choose very solid stands for the green screen to prevent it from tipping over on the cast. Plan to use sandbags for the green screen stands and lighting equipment. Learn how to recognize a green screen by watching this 10 hour video of a green screen. The link is in the description. Tell your talents not to wear any green clothing, um, unless the green elements are far away from the edge of the actor, in which case you can isolate it with a garbage mask, but with extra post-production work of course. There still is a way to deal with green screen clothing in front of a green screen, um, but I talk about it later in the video. Be careful with dark shiny shoes. Be careful with glasses. Be careful with yellow colors on your subjects if you don't have a good camera or well-lit green screen. Be careful with any type of shiny or reflective objects in the scene. If performers must have glasses on, make sure they won't turn their head too much so that you can isolate the glasses with a garbage mask if there is a reflection. If you're unsure about how uh, keying a specific scene will turn out in post-production, do some testing. For instance, say you have a scene where a talent is smoking in front of the green screen. Will this work properly? Spraying liquids, how about that? Well, that is typically something you have to test. If you're gaming or streaming, consider using a collapsible green screen like the Elgato green screen. If you plan to build a permanent green screen room, um, paint might be your best option, but use a special chroma key paint that only has one shade of green and make sure your wall is ultra smooth. Otherwise, pick a soft, mate and non-reflective material. You have many cheap options on Amazon or eBay with muslin cloth. I use a stretchable cloth from Westcott, with which I can easily get rid of faults and wrinkles. Um, I love it. Rehearse and communicate in advance with the cast to make sure they have a clear idea of what they are going to be slapped on in post-production. Consider using stock footage for mundane and generic scenes. Not all scenes require the same level of efforts. Um, fast action close-ups are usually much quicker to shoot and easier to key than long full body shots. Green screen is often the way to go, but in some cases, don't forget to consider the use of a blue screen as well. Apart from keying Shrek, um, blue screens are darker and reflect less light, so you'll have less spill on the edges. This can be practical when you need to key a blonde girl, for instance, uh, but these screens can require quite a bit of light as well. You know this let's fix it in post stuff? Well, I also think that 90% of the post-production time fixing stuff can be avoided by proper lighting. So let's move on lighting preparation. Have your background footage ready before the shoot so that you can match the onset lighting as best as possible. If not, at least choose a lighting setup that makes sense in respect of the time of day of your scene. Use two separate lighting setups, uh, one just for the screen and one for the talent. Light the green screen first, then light the talent. Leave enough distance between your actors and the green screen to reduce spill and avoid shadows. Light your green screen so that it is evenly balanced. It will actually be easier to evenly balance your lighting if you use long linear lighting sources such as LED tubes or tall LED panels. Use softbox modifiers on your lighting equipment. 
Use a backlight to separate your subjects from the background. This often makes keying much, much easier. But you should also make sure this backlight will match your end lighting as well. Avoid using a bounce card because it will probably reflect the green light reflected by the screen and might add some nasty green spill. Consider separating the foreground and the background using luminance in addition to color separation. Uh, for instance, if a talent has dark green clothing, increasing the light output on the green screen will help separating the foreground and post-production because of the luma difference. Um, this is kind of how uh, you can deal with green uh, people in front of the green screen. Don't mix different color temperatures on the green screen because that will make keying much harder. Um, I'd recommend you pick one color temperature and just stick with it. If you're using LED lighting, make sure you are using high CRI lighting equipment. If you have fluorescent lighting, consider using a minus gel to remove the green spike of the spectrum. Stretch your green screen to prevent folds and wrinkles. Make sure you are not creating any shadows. Avoid hard lines and use the cowed green screen for the floor to create a smooth transition. Check any tattoos for green colors and hide green parts. Keep the camera standing still on a tripod if you can, no zoom and no pan. Or if you want to add movement, add markers on your green screen and then track them in post-production. Don't use red tape for the tracking points because they will be a nightmare to remove in post-production. Use green tape for the tracking points. If you're not confident with how your tracking will turn out, make two takes, one static and one moving. Consider using a green screen costume sometimes. Um, you can quickly get very creative with this. Don't wash your green screen because it will probably produce wrinkles and part of it could get washed out. Unless you have to, of course. Um, but generally speaking, this is not a good idea, uh, which is a good thing because greenwashing is bad. Beware of reflections of the green screen on white walls. These can be very nasty and contribute to creating spear, uh, which you want to avoid as much as possible. Don't really use a fog or a smoke machine, uh, as this will make the footage hard to key, especially if your camera has a severe H.264 compression. It will also make the green screen color different from take to take, and this will mess up your post-production, trust me. If you're using a fan, watch out. Um, wind can affect the green screen very badly and you could end up having to deal with moving shadows because of the clove movement. Review all of your green screen footage on a big external monitor on location after each take. The most important thing to check is making sure your talents are within the green screen area throughout the whole take. If you want to go one step further, import your footage using After Effects on location after the first two or three takes just to make sure you're on the right track. You might have to find someone dedicated to that task though. And if you are a technical master, you can try and do some previs, a technique used in Hollywood movies to preview your scene in a real-time environment. For this, you can use an ATEM Mini and use the green screen keying function. Uh, you can then see a live key of the talent in front of the final background, and even show it to the actors in real time. Prevent your actors from slipping by placing mats between the floor and the green screen. Wash your hands often. Use green tape for talent positioning. Use real life background and foreground elements as much as possible. It will help make your key more convincing. Limit the number of green screen shots in your script. Each shot is going to eat a lot of post-production time and remember that each green screen shot bears the risk of failure. It can end up looking uh, very unrealistic and require tremendous post-production to fix a small issue. Have green clothing bits and paint with you. Don't worry about grip equipment being visible in front of the green screen, as long as they are away from the talents and elements you want to retain. Make sure you are not creating any shadows. If you plan to composite the shot on a blurry background, uh, don't be afraid to shoot wide open to get a shallow depth of field. It can help to blur out the imperfection of your green screen and blend the subject better. Talking of aperture, let's spend a bit of time on camera settings now. Pick the best camera you can find. Um, that's one of the very few cases in the creative space where your camera will actually make a big difference. And this is because professional cameras have much lower noise levels and better codecs with less compression. Avoid shooting at a high ISO. Uh, it will add a very nasty noise and this will probably mess up your key. If you can, shoot raw. I shoot Blackmagic RAW with low compression. I think it's the best codec for this type of work, but I think you can have some ProRes RAW uh, 
uh, with the Atomos. If you cannot shoot RAW, uh, record ProRes with an external monitor. It's a much better work codec than this H264. Record at the highest quality level of your camera and with the lowest compression. Don't use a green SD card because your footage will disappear. Turn in-camera sharpening off. Match the shooting shutter speed with the background shutter speed. Uh, if you have an average camera, it might be better to use a high shutter speed because motion blur is very hard to keep. Use a big monitor on set to spot issues easily. Nail your focus. It can look like a very basic piece of advice, but you'll really regret it if it's slightly off during all the takes. Use the false color tool to see if your green screen is evenly lit. Uh, it should show a constant medium gray color, corresponding to about 55 IRE. Use a vectorscope to check your green color. You can find these tools in some external monitors. If you don't have any of these tools, use an app on your phone such as Green Screener and aim at the screen. I've put a link in the description. It looks like a pretty decent substitute for like other professional tools. Choose your focal length wisely. Um, you will often get better results shooting at a long focal length far away from the subject rather than shooting with a wide lens, since that can induce distortion. Uh, check out this article in the description I've linked as well. If you're shooting one full person standing still, tilt the camera 90 degrees in portrait mode to fit as much useful info as possible in the frame. Shoot at a high resolution uh, to preserve a maximum level of detail. If you shoot 4K, After Effects will probably struggle, so if you need to make proxies, you have to test your post-production workflow beforehand, just to make sure you have enough computer power. Which brings me to my next part, post-production. Fix it in post? Um, nope, not this time. Do not key log footage. Uh, it's often best to key Rec. 709 footage with a decent amount of contrast and saturation, especially if you're working with consumer or prosumer cameras. If you're using Keylight plugin in After Effects, read the Keylight manual. Denoise the footage before keying. If you're denoising in Resolve and then exporting in After Effects, export your intermediate files using ProRes 444XQ to keep the highest possible level of color detail. Add virtual camera shake in post. Add loads of camera shake in post if your key is really bad. Make an inner mask around green elements that have to stay in the final scene. Make an outside mask to cut out the gear and unnecessary green screen parts. Ideally, you want an inner mask as big as possible and an outside mask as small as possible. But if you have to animate these masks with time, it can take a lot of time to keyframe everything, so it's a balance to find. Feather all your masks. Look at the screen mates to check for any transparency zones on your subjects or furs in the background. If a specific zone is messing things up, don't try and make a perfect black and white mate with general settings. Make garbage masks to create inclusion or exclusion specific zones. When selecting the green screen color, pick a green color that is as close as possible to the subject face. Ideally, you should pick a square and let the software compute an average value. If you can't, try and pick multiple colors and see which one gives the best results. If you're using After Effects, do multiple key light layers with different colors. For instance, one key light layer for keying the head, which is close to one shade of green, then another for keying the body, which is close to another shade of green. Uh, this will help you make a more precise keying overall. If your green markers have a very different green, do a separate key for the tape markers using garbage masks. Go slow with the softness settings, uh, only use it if you really have to. Add masks with moving opacity to match the environment lighting. Add extra layers of fog, snow and rain to match your final environment. I've already said it, but test your post-production workflow in advance. You want to make sure that your computer is actually capable of handling your visual effects fantasies. Use moving backgrounds instead of a static image. Uh, even if it's just a static view of a city, there is always some slight movement uh, when you shoot a video.
check out Filmmaker's IQ's excellent video on the history of the green screen. I've put the link in the description. Don't be afraid to keep wearing green in your everyday life. Accept the fact that sometimes you don't really need a green screen and you'd be better off going on location. Share your own tips in the comment section so that we can make this a 1001 green screen tips video. If I said something wrong, please share it too in the comment section so that I can list uh, all my mistakes. Now, if you want to reach absolute perfection and ultra realistic looking scenes, I'd recommend you do like Christopher Nolan did on Interstellar. Don't use a green screen. <laughs>